health headlines. Let's check in with our medical contributor and Northwestern Medicine physician, Dr. Lauren Stryker. Good morning. Good morning. Well, the last time you were on, you were talking about cannabis and menopause, and you did a survey. That's right. When I was on a couple of weeks ago, I talked about the fact that there was a study from a year ago that showed that 27 percent of menopausal women used cannabis to help alleviate their menopause symptoms like hot flashes. And because I'm writing a chapter on cannabis in my new hot flash book, I decided I want to do my own research. And I launched this survey on WGN. And I thought since I launched it on WGN, I would give you guys a sneak preview of some of the answers because it's, it's really been interesting. Um, I've had a few hundred, I'm hoping for a thousand, so, you know, keep it up. But so, okay, this is primarily the WGN audience that, that answered the survey and 70%, 70% of respondents said that they used cannabis to help with menopause symptoms. So some of the specifics that surprised me. Number one, I asked, who told you? Who told you what to buy, what to do, what would work? And some people said, yeah, I went to the dispensary or a friend or a relative, but fully 70% of respondents said, I just figured it out on my own. I had no idea. I read about it. I just figured it out. And sometimes they were right and sometimes they were wrong. But the specifics of why people are taking it is also really interesting. So 44% of WGN audience is that responded is, is taking it to help their libido. And of that 44%, 81% said that it helped, made their libido, made their sex drive better. 60% of respondents said they were taking cannabis to help with hot flashes. And 70% of them said it was actually helping. But this was the big one. This was the big one. Everyone, everyone, almost 100% of respondents said they were taking cannabis to help them sleep, specifically to sleep. 98%, 98% said that it was helping them sleep. So, I mean, as these answers continue to roll, and there was lots more. Um, it's, it's really interesting stuff. And in, and in fact, tonight at six o'clock, I'm gonna do a Facebook Live specifically answering questions about cannabis and menopause because I've been getting so many of them. So All interesting. Right. All right, another subject here, a new study about coffee and your heart. Yeah, you know, I mean, when you talk about cannabis and people using it as medicine, the number one pharmacologic thing that people use, quite frankly, in the world is coffee because not only does it taste good and smell good, but it's a stimulant. But there was a study that came out that was really interesting recently that specifically talked about arrhythmias because a lot of people that have arrhythmias like palpitations, um, you know, or, or supraventricular tachycardia are told don't drink coffee because it might increase your risk of having an arrhythmia. And it was based on a really old study. So this is a new study of over 300,000 um, middle-aged and older adults. And what they found is that even if people were drinking up to six cups of coffee a day, there was no increase in arrhythmias. And in fact, there was a 3% decrease in arrhythmias. So, so the bottom line is, I mean, I'm not telling you if you have an arrhythmia that you should drink coffee to reduce the risk of an arrhythmia. But according to this study, if you're a coffee lover and you've been told to avoid it because it's going to give you palpitations, it probably won't. It probably won't. So yeah, and the thing about coffee too is I started reading about this and I thought, okay, I've been doing all this work on cannabis. I really want to kind of focus on coffee as another pharmacologic agent because so many people are using it. And it's amazing how good coffee is for you. There's there's lots yeah. of studies that have just come out saying it's it's really good. And you know, it's confusing because when you look at some of the older studies and it's so conflictual, but what we now realize is that a lot of these older studies, they didn't get rid of the people who were smoking, who were obese, who were older. So if you look at just coffee, just coffee, it is, it's, it's good for you. It's good for you. I mean, diabetes, this one blew my mind. For every additional cup of coffee that's consumed daily, there is as much as a 7% reduction in the risk of diabetes. And this, and I have no explanation for this, it seems to me that the protective effects are best when you have your coffee at lunch instead of breakfast or dinner. Um, heart health, we were talking about heart health earlier. Oh my God, coffee drinkers are so much less likely to develop cardiovascular disease. Yeah. Blood pressure, blood pressure. This one all has a caveat, like a lot of these things. It, it turns out that if someone's just an occasional coffee drinker, it might actually make their blood pressure go up. But if it's someone who's drinking coffee every day, like me, you know, I'm in the like five cup a day club, um, it actually decreases decreases blood pressure. Oh, thank you. 
Go figure. I know. And right? then this is the other thing too. It, it's it's not always about the caffeine. So like when you look at the cancer numbers, for for example, and the cancer numbers are kind of all over the place, except when it comes to uterine cancer and liver cancer. And it turns out uterine cancer is reduced if you're a coffee drinker. And it doesn't matter if it's caffeinated or decaffeinated because there's all this other stuff in coffee. But liver cancer, which is hugely reduced by coffee drinkers, it's only if it's caffeinated. So, you know, who would who would predict this kind of stuff? Go um, figure. Yeah. Go all figure. Right. Go all figure. right. Increase your brain, increases concentration, makes you, you know, alert. As long as it doesn't keep you up at night, it's it's really pretty reassuring. It's all good stuff. That's awesome. All right. For more, you can follow Dr. Stryker on social media. Uh, we'll put up that screen. There's all the ways to follow her. Thanks for being with us again. Thank you. All right. Time now for Around Town. Hey, Anna.